best-selling book, Swim, Why We Love the Water, Outside the Box, which was a memoir, book about Peter Jennings, book called America the Beautiful, and uh, I believe the last time we talked to her could have been a book about the tall blondes, which a book was about giraffes. Miss uh, Cher was with uh, ABC News for 30 years. 20 years, she was on uh, uh, 2020. And among many other uh, stories she covers, she covered NASA. Please welcome to the program, Lynn Cher. Good morning, Miss Cher. Good morning, Mr. Ryan. It's nice to be with you again. Man, you look good. Thank you. What's going on, baby? Why are you so surprised? Well, I don't know. I'm always surprised when someone looks good. So. <laughs> Who was Sally Ryan? Who was Sally Ryan, America's first woman in space? You know, the Russians beat us to it, as usual, They in the space department. They had uh, two women up in space before we even got one. But Sally flew on June 18th, 1983. She was 32 years old, flew in the space shuttle Challenger, and burst through what was probably the ultimate uh, glass ceiling. And by doing that, she said to so many women around the world, uh, if she could do this, we can do anything. She became a real role model and did an extraordinarily wonderful job. Did you discover, you covered the... Uh space program in its nascent stages, didn't you? Well, I covered the beginning of the shuttle program. That's oh, when okay. I was brought in, and that was the nascent stages of the shuttle program. Right. As you well know, after we got to the moon, there was a period when we didn't do anything in the space program, and then uh, they decided to build this uh, machine called the shuttle, which instead of going to a place, would go up or orbit the Earth, do things in orbit, and then come back down to Earth, a reusable spacecraft for the first time. And that's when they decided to let women and minorities uh, join what had up till then been a kind of a all male macho men's club. Well, Lynn Cher's uh, new book, as I, I did not mention it, is Sally Ride, America's First Woman in Space, um, who apparently was a more of a unique individual than we realized. Tell me. There were a lot of things about Sally that we didn't know. She was, first of all, my friend for 30 years, I have to say. Writing this book was a, a labor of love and kind of sad because uh, she died in July of uh, 2012 of pancreatic cancer, way too oh, early yeah. at the age of 61. Um, one of the big things, though, that came out when Sally died is the world discovered, and I learned, uh, she'd been living with another woman for more than a quarter century. Uh, this is a woman who had been married to a man while she was at NASA, another astronaut, Steve Hawley, a wonderful marriage. Uh, that lasted about five years, and they stayed friends. But she wound up with another woman, but it was a relationship done that she she decided, they decided to keep private. It was not something that she advertised to the public or talked about ever in public. I wonder about people like that and the torment and torture that they, oh, torture may not be, well, that might be the right word. You know, with Sally, it wasn't clear. She never talked about it. She was a very optimistic, happy, upbeat person. And, um... I can't help thinking, though, that this was there was some shame and fear inflicted by our society. You know, think about it. To even do this to one of our biggest heroes, and how many of our heroes has, have we as a society done this to? Uh, of course, when she and Tam, her partner's name, uh, Tam O'Shaughnessy, uh, she survived by Tam. And when she and Tam first got together as a couple, it was 1980. I don't know, six or seven, no. and it was a different era, right? You weren't allowed in some places to be out publicly. What did Tam do, or Doug, what did she do? Tam uh, is also in the science biz, uh, works with Sally. They started a company called Sally Ride Science, which is a for-profit company to get girls, mostly middle school girls, interested in science, math, and technology. And this is this is what Sally wanted to do. She flew, she was bold, she proved that you didn't have to have the right plumbing to have the right stuff. She did all these terrific things, and then she wanted to share her love for science with girls all around the world, all around the country. And this is what she and Tam have uh, spent most of their time doing. How many women were vying to occupy the slot that Sally finally ascended to? When Sally applied, which was in 1977, when NASA first opened uh, right. the doors to uh, women and minorities, there were something like 8,000 minorities. Uh, excuse me, there were something like 8,000 applications. Right. And about 1,000 of them uh, were for the kind of job that, that, that Sally wanted. But there were uh, quite a lot of women, and she beat out uh, most of those other 8,000. There were six women chosen in 1978. She was one of them, and of those six, she became the first that was selected to fly. Uh, yes, it was a competition, but kind of a friendly competition. They all knew one of them would go, and the question was, which one? Were there any clear 
attributes that she had that distinguished her clearly from these other women. Yes, from all the people that I interviewed, I did about 200 interviews for this book, and it seems that they wanted someone who was not um, a, a star grabber, somebody who was a team player. Sally had almost been a professional tennis player and almost made it, except for what she always said was, my forehand. So she decided not to be in tennis. She went back to science. And I think NASA, I know that NASA really liked the fact that she was a team player. She was cool under pressure. Um, nothing riled her. She was a very private person, and yet she was full of fun. And I think they liked the fact that she also had great hand-eye coordination. And remember the robot arm, Dom, the big sure. manipulator arm? Sally did very well when she worked on that, and I really do believe a lot of that had to do with her tennis background. She looks a little bit like, speaking of tennis, and a woman that covers it and covers all sports, she looks a little bit like my friend uh, Sally Jenkins. Do you know Sally? I do know Sally, and uh, if you'll look on the book, you'll see a wonderful blurb from Sally, who loved the book, I'm happy to say, thanks to Sally. Uh, yeah, there, there is that kind of tomboyish look to her, a word that, by the way, Sally hated the word tomboy, as if, uh, what what's I wrong use, with the Tom the way, Girl? Man. I beg your pardon? I said not what I use, but go ahead. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Um, in any event, um, yeah, she she was just fun. You know, I, 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 I refer to Sally as not an adjective but a verb. If she were a, were a part of grammar, she would be a verb. She was an active verb. She was a doer. Uh, five, five and a half, very trim, always doing something, a wonderful friend, very mischievous, liked to play. But I don't know if you remember, I'm sure you do, Don, the, the run-up to her um, flight, the press was just awful, particularly, I'm sorry to say, the male press. The single worst question I've ever heard asked of anyone at her pre-flight press conference, uh, a male reporter from Time magazine said, uh, Dr. Ride, PhD in astrophysics, Dr. Ride, when you have a problem, when something goes wrong in training, how do you handle it? He said, do you weep? Well, it's idiotic. Wow, exactly. And now, to Sally's credit, she laughed. She turned to the uh, the pilot of the mission sitting next to her, Rick Houck, and she said, why doesn't anyone ever ask Rick these questions? So she was able to kind of defuse everything, which was really one of the great things about her. So how much did you know about everything about her before you decided to do the book? Well, by the time I did the book, I knew everything. I, oh, okay. I got the assignment a day and a half after she died, and uh, that's because her partner, Tam, decided that all the fuss about the fact that it was now revealed that Sally uh, had been in a relationship with a woman oh. uh, needed to be dealt with, and she wanted a proper grown-up biography. She and Sally had written children's science books together. So um, I, got the, I got the deal to do it um, a day and a half afterwards, and by then I knew pretty much everything, and then with all the interviews I did, I found out a lot more. I learned, um, I learned how Sally had been a major player in the investigation of the Challenger explosion. You know, she was on that sure. Rogers Commission. Turns out that she, in fact, had turned up a key document that led them to discovering it was the O-rings. She had a role in lots of things. She advised two presidents. She worked on a number of commissions. And you know what, but what she always said was what that she loved about space most was the weightlessness. And she would tell a room full of girls, you know, if you were in space in this room, you could do 35 somersaults in a row. There is nothing as much fun as weightlessness. Sort of makes you want to go, doesn't it? Well, probably not you, but yeah, I do. You could do that on acid back in the 60s. Yes, I could. Right. <laughs> uh, maybe you don't know about that. We will have